this obstinate woman, this widow who had no voice, but apparently she did. She kept at it day after day. And some people say that in some translations it, it gets, you know, where she would, the judge says that she won't continue coming to me. Some translators say it's a little bit more harsh than that, so she won't beat on him physically. And that's a good thing that she finally gets what she needs from this judge. You know, I had this, this person who, who you wouldn't think would have the right to do that, does it anyway. Despite her, her social status, which is nil, basically, in that society, how is it that she has the guts to do this? Does she have the faith it takes to make something happen? Apparently so. Jesus uses her as an example of one who never gives up, who knows that she's going for the right to get justice done. Jesus also has another, there's another parable in there, or another meeting with Jesus. Remember the, the Canaanite woman in Matthew 15. He's on his way and she comes up to him and she keeps pestering him and the disciples say, should we get rid of her? He says, no, finally, you know, okay, let's hear what you have to say. And she said, my daughter's ill, you can make her well, you can make her well. And Jesus says, no, we give the, 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 the meal to the children first, meaning that she's not really included in that that group of people. And she keeps at him and says, well, at least, you know, the dogs get scraps under the master's table. And he finds in her amazing faith. And he grants her wish, and her daughter is made well. We have two women with no status, basically, getting what they need from Jesus. Examples of faith. Will he find faith on this earth? What does he mean by that? How do we know if you're faithful or not? How will he know? How will he see that? How will Jesus know if there's faith in this land? Is it the James part? Well, will you remember James, the epistle of James? You won't know my faith except through my works? Is that how he looks at it? Is that what Jesus is saying in this parable here about this woman who keeps pestering this judge? You take it into action? And you never give up hope that your prayers will be answered? Mm. Are people showing their faith, for example, helping rebuild their lives after Hurricane Matthew in all these different places? Or the natives unifying their, their, their nations to, to preserve their sacred lands? or the people active in Black, Black Lives Matter, or any number of things that people are, are hoping for more justice than they are getting or deserve. How do we show our faith? What if I'm not the type of person to be in your face, which I'm not? What, what do I do, do then to show my faith? It's not going to be pestering a judge to get what I need. It's not going to be picketing uh, in someone's face. What does it look like for me and others who are not quite as forward as that? Jesus talks about the power of prayer and hope. And we sense that when we are praying, there is hope attached to it. Why else would we pray if there wasn't hope attached? If we had no hope, we wouldn't bother praying because there's a glimmer of, of it to a God who, who helps us, who, unlike the unjust judge, will give us and give us what we need in abundance. It says quickly. And we wonder, how quickly is that for us? Faith in action. Um, went to the Cherokee Nation a few years ago, and there's an elderly couple in their 90s who couldn't do much to help. They prayed, and they sent money, and they sent some other things. There was always a way that they could show their faith in action to make things happen. I know for these kids that go on trips or people go on trips, there's always somebody behind the scenes making it happen. Somehow. There's the, the shut-in people who are shut in who can't move about who send cards and birthdays or, or to say hi or to, to call and check on people. And that's faith in action. 
It's a powerful thing. My last year of seminary, I was burnt out. Working, going to school, having a baby girl to take care of. I told my dad, I can't, I'm not if I'm going to make it or not. He sent me a card. Just a simple card. I know you can do this. I know you can do this. You'll get through this. And something that simple 15 years ago or whatever it was, it was so meaningful to me. It didn't take much to boost my spirits and know that I'm supported and loved and that I de- could indeed make it through. And how often does that happen in our life? Something small where faith is, is the size of a mustard seed and something, some action is just small, but it makes a big difference anyway. The question's not about God's vindication about the persecuted community. We're talking about the, 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 uh, the golden calf that, that Sue read. Or not the golden calf. Um, where am I? All right. Will Jesus' disciples remain faithful in spite of the long haul? And that's kind of what he's saying is, you know, you keep hope, you keep prayer to keep going. There's kind of something corny I've been watching lately. I've never watched it before. The Doctor Who series. Yeah, I'm not hitting. Some heads are nodding. What's intriguing to me is this character Doctor Who is, is a very spiritual person. Doesn't use weapons. Is kind of on the side of reconciliation. And he's, he's a Time Lord. And there's another Time Lord. He thought he was the last one. And his mentor is a Time Lord too. And he's, he's kind of gone to the dark side a bit. And he's actually entrapped Doctor Who. It made him, instead of this person, kind of body turns him into this little fragile, uh, helpless being. And of course, Doctor Who, who has a couple of people with him, and he, he whispers in the ear of one of his friends, and you don't know what he's whispering in that, that episode, but the next episode you find out. What he's whispered to her is, she was to go out into the world and spread the news to give all your good thoughts to Doctor Who at one specific moment in time, so that millions of lives would focus their, their love and attention on this one being. And it so happens at this particular time, he, he becomes himself again. The power of, of people's thoughts and prayers have restored him to, to his original self with power and, and authority and, and all this kind of thing. And his mentor is now cowering under the gun of, of his compatriots. And they say, just, let's, let, let's just do away with him. Let's just get rid of him. And Doctor Who says no. And he rushes to him and says, I forgive you. It's a turn of events you don't expect, especially in today's modern t- television series where the easy things just to, you know, do away with him. He goes up to him and says, For- I forgive you. After all this time, it had been years of, of being this scrawny little thing, and now he's ready to forgive the one who put him there. The power of prayer has given this man a sense of, of well-being, of peace, of, of wholeness, that he's able to come out of it and, and, and forgive those who put him there and to grieve if something happens to his friend. I'm quite taken with Desmond Tutu, first archbishop in South Africa, black archbishop of Cape Town. His admirers saw him as a great man who, since the demise of apartheid, <clears throat> has been active in the defense of human rights and uses this whole high profile to campaign for the oppressed. He campaigned to fight AIDS, HIV, tuberculosis, poverty, racism, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia. In May of 2001, Journalist Giles Brandeth interviewed South African Anglican Bishop Tutu. It was a powerful experience for Brandeth, for Desmond Tutu was suffering from prostate cancer, and there was a real chance this might be his last interview he would ever give. What might Tutu talk about? Perhaps the amazing transformation in the politics of his country, and of which he himself had a leading role? No. Here's what he told Brandeth. If this is going to be my last interview, I am glad we are not going to talk about politics. Let's talk about prayer and adoration 
about faith, hope, and forgiveness. For two to these are the things that are stuff of life. Someone that influential boils it down to these simple things that have so much restorative power that we don't even know. And at the very end, well, he's still alive, but at the very end, that's what he wants to talk about. These things that unite people through prayer, through forgiveness, and hope, they will become even more enriched children of God, created in the image of God, to forgive, to pray, to hope on God who is always giving for us. Let's continue with that hope and journey of faith. Amen.